This is a quick guide on how to profile your display with the latest Calibrite Profiler. I'm Art, Calibrite Ambassador. <laughs> to get the latest Calibrite Profiler and be on the bleeding edge of color control, simply go to Calibrite.com and download the software for your perspective operating system. From there, install the software and launch it. Something to note, if you are in a system configuration like mine where there are multiple displays, they must be set to extended desktop in order for the profiling to work and function properly. A few other things to note as well is depending on the operating system you have, there are certain settings to you to turn off before you start the calibration in order for you to get the best result possible, but that is for another video. For now, let's jump in and talk about Calibrite Profiler. Simply enough, this is going to be Calibrite software for profiling going forward. What Calibrite have done is simply combine Color Checker Profiler and Color Checker Studio together into a one single easy to use software. The key thing here is that the device that you own will act as the activation key for the various function that is available in this program. Let's take a quick tour of Calibrite Profiler. Right now, what I have selected is the profile my monitor and we have the option to choose between basic and advanced. We'll start out in basic in just a moment but you will have the opportunity to profiles, projectors, cameras, scanner, printers, and there's also a utility section which you can use to check monitor uniformity. You can do a validation to see how your profile is functioning. There is a preset manager. Let's say there is a setting or a combination of setting that I find work well. I can export that and share that with all of you. You can simply download that, just one single file, load it in, and you can start the calibration process right away. But for now, let's go back. What I want to do first is show us how quickly it is that you can really get to profiling your display. In basic right now, the other thing I also want to point out too is at the very top, there is a progress and review. These are the various settings that you're going to choose in a program and these are going to expand into multiple different circles as we touch on different workflow. So let's start out with monitor basic. Once I click on that, I have my BenQ PD3205U selected. For this display, if you're not really certain what your display backlight is, white LED tends to be the best one to choose, but I know for a fact that BenQ is using RGB LED and this is the best setting to choose for this display, so I'm going to choose that. But choosing the proper backlight technology for your display is definitely gonna be paramount in getting a successful calibration. Once you're done with choosing your display, what you would simply do is choose what you want to match to or the workflow that you'll be using this in. Photo, pre-press, video, you can do a custom one or even load a save preset that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna leave this as photo right now and to verify the photo setting, what you would simply do is look at the very top on that bar, there is a progress and review. So right now there are certain settings that I can change and there are certain ones that are grayed out. And the reason why they're grayed out is because we are in basic mode at the moment. I can change the brightness, I can change the white point. However, when it comes to contrast, when it comes to the type of profile or the profile versions, those are things that are grayed out at the moment and the patch is now just the standard 118 patch. But let's continue with this for a second. So we click on next once already, we're gonna click on next again. So this will be the second time. I already seen that the program is seeing my color checker display plus. And notice this save preset button. It's just white on the outline right now. This is gonna be important later. So what I'm gonna do now is click on start measurement. It's going to ask me this question, what type of control I have in my display. I'm simply just gonna choose brightness and click on continue at the bottom. From here, I am already at the calibration screen. That's only four clicks. What I would simply do is put my device on the screen by rotating that. And this also is a guide that shows you as well. Notice how when I put the device back into its original configuration, it's showing red the moment I flip this over, it's showing green saying that you're good to go. On the other side of the screen, it's telling you that you should tilt your display back so that the device lays flat on your display, like so. This way you avoid any stray lights coming in. And yes, you can certainly calibrate in a bright environment like this, because if you look at the device that you have, there is a felt lining that is surrounded the opening. So this is going to prevent any stray light from coming in, especially when you have this lay flat against the screen. From this point, I can click on next. So in just five clicks, I can start a display profiling. But 
you know me, and I love using advanced function, and I like to go in and granularly control a little bit more things on my display. So what I'm gonna do is go back, I'll take this device down, and let's make some changes. So what I'm gonna do is start out at the very beginning, and I'm going to choose the monitor, but what I'm gonna do this time is choose the advanced function for this. All right, so with advanced selected, I'm going to click next, I am still going to profile my BenQ PD3205U RGB LED selected. This is photo. But what I can do at this point in time is that the progress and review at the top, I can go in and change those settings. So let's start out with the white point. Personally for me, D65 tends to be a really good white point to use. Now, if you do any type of display profiling for print, you may want to choose D50, or if you want to choose D55, you can also certainly go in and choose it from the custom setting as well. I'll leave this right now at the default D65. What about luminance? The default is 120. I always find 120 too bright for my environment and the type of workflow that I do. I can choose 100, but what I can do better than that is I can click on custom and I can pre-select them from the drop-down list of the pre-configured ones available. The other thing what I can do as well is I can also type in a custom value. Let's say I want to use 90. I would simply go and type 90 into this dialog, or what I can do is also pull the slider up and down as well. I'll cancel this out, and what I'm gonna do is just choose 80 Candela. This is going to be the value that works best for me. Now, as far as luminance go, my recommendation is to choose anything between 80 to 120 Candela, and that's going to be best for print workflow. Amazingly enough, what works best for print workflow is also something that's going to work for any displays out there as well, so you don't really need to do multiple luminance calibration. If you do one that's good for like the print workflow, which is technically the gold standard, it will also apply to any other type of workflow that you're going to put your display through as well. From this point, what I'm gonna do is, let's click on next, and it's walking me through a few of the options. Right now, I am in the contrast. So I have the contrast ratio selected as native, but I can go in and customize this. So for instance, I can choose to use a custom white point. I can use an ICC PCS black point. I can custom the back point, or I can use a measurement. So I can use this device to measure a black point that I want to use as well. For this profiling, we're going to use native. Gamma, I can choose 2.2, or if I want something else, for instance, if I have the Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus, which is the one that I have right now, I also have the option to choose BT1886 for video workflow as well. But when I'm going to simply do this, is leave this at 2.2 gamma for the time being. I also have the option to choose advanced function as well. Ambient auto light adjust, I'm going to have that to off. Flare correction, we'll have that to off. And you can also change the chromatic adaptation, the profile version, and the profile type. So matrix tends to work the best throughout. And lastly, we have to look at the different patch set options we have. So these are very similar to color checker profiler have come before it. There is a standard 118, the advanced 211, and there is the advanced plus that has 461. The one thing to note about the advanced plus is that there is this option to add from image. So when I click on advanced plus, notice how the add from image button now lights up. It's no longer grayed out. What I can do is click on this and simply load in the image and it will generate a patch based on that image for me. So if I want to really fine tune my display profiling, I can certainly do that. For the sake of speed and doing this demo, I'm simply going to choose on standard 118 patches. All right, at this point, I can click on next and I have my device chosen and activated. You can see there's a green ring around it. And remember to save preset button? Notice how it's yellow right now. When it's yellow right now, it tells you that there are certain settings that were changed along the way in the progress bar at the very top. And it's asking you, do you want to save that? So what I can do is I can simply click on that and just say, I'm just gonna say this one, Art D65 for now, demo. Now I can put in extra notes in this preset as well. If I want to do, do that, I can certainly choose to. I will click on save and now my preset save. Notice how the save preset button is now green, all right? We'll click on start measurement and this takes me to the same screen I've seen before, hardware control, what type of control I have. So for most displays, you're just really going to simply choose brightness and just go along with it. Certain displays, you can do RGB control, but that's for another video and more advanced profiling of your display. Click on continue, and we are now at that screen again. 
Yes, in the advanced option, there are more steps, but it does offer you more granular control over your display profiling and what you want from your display profile. What I'm simply gonna do now, because I already have my display tilted back, I will pull open the lid on my color checker display plus and hang that from the display. One thing I also want to point out as well is that there is a counterweight on the back of this and on the counterweight itself, there is one side that has the tag. The other side is literally a push down button and your finger can feel that. And what you can simply do is push that down and just slide the cable in and out. Don't need to pull it or anything like that. It's really just super easy when you slide it just slightly press it and you can just simply pull the cable and adjust the length wherever you want that to be so that it matches with your display. You don't have to worry about this not laying flat on your display. All right, I already have that adjusted. I'm gonna lay this flat on the display and I'm simply going to click on next. The first thing that will ask me to do is brightness adjustment. So right now my target illumination that I want is 80. The current device right now is measuring at 73, so what I need to do is bring the brightness up. This one is the part where you have to go to the display menu, and I'm simply going to push the brightness up by a few points. One thing to note about adjusting your display brightness is that many times when you're really doing these type of adjustments, you're not going to land exactly at the value that you have chosen for the luminance, as long as you are within plus minus five, our eyes can't really visually tell the difference and you're going to be okay. So get as close as possible to the target value, but note that if it doesn't land exactly, you're gonna be okay too. All right, from this point, click on next and this will start the measurement process. I have left the calibrator in the circle and what's nice about Calibrite Profiler software is that it gives me a total number of paths selected, the number of patches I'm measuring. And the other thing what it's doing is that it's telling me at any point of a time, the progress that is on the bottom. Now, when you reach this screen, you have to verify that the calibrator is in a circle and you have to click on start measurement. Otherwise, it would just sit there and do nothing. So once you see this going, you will see that this is showing a progress bar that will progress this. And as you go along, we start to see that light up already and there is a countdown for how many patches are remaining. A really nice user interface that you're going to see. What I'm gonna do is have this finish the measuring process and then what I'll do is come back and talk about wrapping this up a little bit and creating a profile for this display. So now that the primary measurement has finished, the program is going to create a few extra patches and do an iterative profiling to verify the results. What we have at the end is the Calbright logo. It says, please remove your device from the display and replace the diffuser over the lens. If you're going to validate your display, you can certainly just simply leave it where it is or move it to the side if you need to see some of the prompt that comes up, but you don't necessarily have to close the lid in order for you to go forward in the progress for the display profiling. What I'm simply gonna do is click on next and you can see that it goes forward, it doesn't lock you in. The other thing I also wanna point out is that the colors you're seeing right now are the actual color being measured from the display. I'll click on next and this is the part where I would create a profile for the display. I'll simply just move that to the side right now. So for this, this is BenQ PD3205U and this one I set the display into sRGB mode so I'll choose that. In general, it's a good idea for us to reprofile our display every few weeks or so, because even though we have an LCD display and they don't drift quite as much as the CRT or the tube display from before, they do slightly change over time. And if you want to guarantee you're going to get the best result possible from what you're doing, it's a good idea to just really go and profile your display every so often. I'll click on save. This is going to save the profile out and it will automatically put it into the system and set it up for me automatically. I don't have to go in and verify this or anything like that at all. If I want to do that, I can, but it will put it in the right location. So with this, I can do a before and after on many demo images. There's one with skin tone. There's also a black on white, a color on white, black and white picture. And there's also these scalings and colors, which I think looks really great. And you can, like I said, certainly choose before and after. So here's the thing. If you frequently profile your display, when you're done with the profiling process and you click on before and after toggle, you're really not supposed to see that big of a variation at all. And that is the way how it is supposed to be. If you're seeing variations and they are quite drastic, it could result from a few things, either major setting changes or 
you may have not profiled your display in some time. And that will be something that I may look into. But for the most part, for a proper profiling with a good frequency, changes are supposed to be minimal. All right. From here, what I can do is click on those square with the plus sign and I can load in my own image. In fact, I can load up to three images if I want to review my image in a before and after fashion, the way how Calibrite have done it. I can also click below there and go to profile information to which what I can do now is really preview the color gamut I have. This is my current profile. That is the one in blue. This is sRGB. So what this is telling me right now is I'm able to get a color gamut that's slightly larger than sRGB, which is actually a good thing. That's Adobe RGB. So you can see the way how the gamut conformity is, Profoto, and also Display P3. What I'm going to do is disable Profoto and disable Adobe RGB, but you start to get an idea as to how the display is being profiled. There's also data point at the bottom as well with white point, the XY coordinate, black point illumination that you're able to achieve and also the contrast ratio for the display. At this point, you can also check on the profile curve and volume. So I can do the curve or I can also see the volume as well by checking on that and it will load the profile in. And this is a comparison against sRGB. So you see that there it's conforming really well. It's slightly larger than sRGB. So it just tells you what this display is able to perform. You can also add other profiles into this too. From here, you're done with your display profiling. You can simply go back home or if you want to validate the profile, you can certainly click on validation. But again, the validation will be for a separate video. I'm Art Calbright Ambassador and I hope you find this information helpful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come, 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 come,